Production of Caesar Guided Tour is supported by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to the sixth episode of the Caesar Guided Tour. The Caesar Guided Tour is a series of videos where I build Caesura, which is an iTunes inspired music player for Apple platforms feature by feature. This episode compiles a few minor fixes from November's 2021.11.1 release into a single video. These fixes are modifying track import to allow importing multiple tracks at once, re implementing sorting in a better, more OS consistent way, and binding the playback controls in the menu bar that were accidentally never bound. Unlike previous episodes, this video brings a workflow and format change. Most footage you'll find in this episode was recorded as the features were being developed, so instead of showing you the code after modifications have already taken place, we'll walk through the exact steps I took to implement these changes. If you have any opinions, positive or negative on this change, please leave a comment with your thoughts so I can adjust things accordingly in episodes coming in 2022. Let's get into it. A few of my friends started using Caesar at the end of October, and one frequent complaint was how time-consuming importing music was due to the inability to import multiple tracks at once. That was enough to bump fixing that up to high priority, so let's take a look at how to remedy this. Here we are in Import Track to Library on our App Delegate class. First up, we change the Open Dialog Box's Allow Multiple Selection property to True. Then we tweak how we respond to a successful file selection. Instead of using the single URL property on the open panel, we change it to loop across the collection of all selected URLs, extracting the metadata of each track and adding it to the library. The library reload is outside of the loop, so only a single refresh occurs once the import is fully complete. And here I am testing that that worked by importing four tracks at once, and sure enough, it works. Now, allow me a little side note before we move on to the next thing. This entire import process is done sequentially and on the main thread. If you were importing a ton of tracks at once, the app's user interface would lock up until the import was complete. This is less than optimal and could definitely be improved in the future. But for now, most imports I've tested with have been so fast that the interface did not meaningfully lock up, so I don't want to optimize things too prematurely, but I am aware of the limitations of this approach. During episode 2, I mentioned that the sorting implementation was likely incomplete or incorrect because standard table views on the Mac highlight the sorted column and display a little arrow denoting if it's sorted in ascending or descending order. Our sorting didn't do that quite yet, so let's fix it. The original implementation used column identifiers and the table view did click table column delegate method. This isn't actually how you're meant to implement sort. Coco has the notion of sort descriptors, which are a combination of a key and an ascending and descending flag. So in this footage right now, I'm setting the sort keys on all of our columns. Then we're going to comment out the table view did click on table column implementation and add in a new delegate method called table view sort descriptors did change. This gets called whenever the user plays with the table view sort UI. From the new sort descriptor, we're going to want to extract the sort key, which will feed to our sort mode variable. Then we trigger a database reload. We also want to handle the ascending descending order flag, so for now let's just reverse the data received by the database and reload the table without reloading from the database. Let's give it a test. Poking around with it here seems to work, but something's fishy. When our sort mode is set to artist ascending, Chibi text music seems to be pushed to the end of the list, even though her name starts with C and it should show up first. After some quick checks, it became clear that our database sorting seems to be case sensitive, so we're going to need to fix that. After some digging around on the internet, I found that you can specify that a SQLite database should ignore case when sorting by using the collate no case flag. So here I am adding it to all of the string-based text fields that we sort by in our library and ordered playlist queries in the library service. Once that's done, we can bring it up to test, and yep, Chibi Tech is currently showing up first in the list. There's one last sorting related issue to fix. Earlier when I detected the ascending or descending state from the sort descriptor and lazily made it reverse the array of data, I forgot that this would absolutely not persist across collection reloads if the user does anything at all or uses a keyword search. 
So we're going to need to make this ascending descending status a properly handled part of the Windows state. So I'm starting off here by adding an ascending boolean variable to the collection view controller class. Then I go back to table view sort descriptors did change method and set that value to the variable instead of reversing the array's contents. Obviously, we're going to need to tweak both the library and ordered playlist queries to take an ascending flag and properly handle inverting the sort order on the database side for all of the fields we're sorting by. Naturally, we also need to modify the call site for these two queries to pass in the ascending variable as the parameter to those queries. And now let's test. Great, sword order is working great now. Previous builds of Caesura had play and pause, previous track, and next track items in the playback menu, but I had completely forgotten to hook them up to any actions, so let's do that before we go. First we're going to enable the menu items and the menu bar in Interface Builder. Then we're going to create an IB action for each of the menu items in the app delegate class that will be called whenever the menu item is chosen. We're going to have to wire up the IB actions to their menu items by control dragging between the menu item and the app delegates icon and choosing the matching IB action method. Then of course we're going to need to write the code in the actions. For play and pause, this means detecting if the player is playing and then calling the collection queue player's pause or play method accordingly. For previous and next track, it's just simply calling the previous track or next track methods on the collection queue player directly. And now we can test. You might notice that out of habit, I tested using the keyboard shortcuts, which are technically a property of the menu item, so it is technically an adequate test, it's just not represented visually on screen at all. Sorry about that. And that does it for the functionality implemented as part of Caesura 2021.11.1. On the next episode, we'll be taking a look at how to implement repeat modes and shuffle playback. See you then.